Hey everyone, I'm Akira and in today's video I'll show you 12 mounts that you can get in less than 10 minutes and how to get them step by step. The first mounts on our lists is of course the Twilight Drake and the Black Drake. First you want to head to the old Dalaran and Northrend via a portal in your faction's capital city, fly south to the middle of the Dragon Blight zone and find the entrance for the raid called Obsidian Sanctum. Right click on your portrait and set the legacy raid size to 10 player for the Black Drake and 25 player for the Twilight Drake. Enter the raid and head straight to the big dragon in the middle and one shot it. The mounts have a 100% drop chance as long as you don't kill anything else in the raid before the boss. If you need both mounts you can either log on to another character and do the other difficulty that you did not do before or you can wait for the weekly reset to do the other difficulty. The next mount on the list is the famous for being extremely easy to get mount, the Bronze Drake. This mount is a 100% drop chance as well from a timed event boss in the heroic version of the Calling of Stratholm. So you want to head to the Caverns of Time, set your dungeon difficulty to heroic and enter the dungeon. Follow the pretty straightforward directions of the dungeon and you'll have plenty of time as long as you are max level as everything will get pretty much one shot by you. A few things to note about the dungeon is here in the beginning you'll have to find some toxic crate stuff with an item you get from Chromie and also in general there will be a lot of roleplay in the dungeon but other than that it's pretty easy to understand what to do. When you've completed most of the dungeon you want to head left just before the room of the last boss and here you'll find a bonus boss the infinite corruptor as long as you completed the dungeon fast enough. Anyway kill the guy and loot your reins of the Bronx Drake. The next mount on the list is the Amani Battle Bear. This guy drops also from a timed challenge but from the dungeon called Sulaman. To obtain this you want to head to the Ghostlands in the Eastern Kingdoms and make sure the dungeon difficulty is set to heroic before entering as it doesn't drop on normal. Head inside once you're sure and once inside you want to speak to Vol'jin. He'll then ring the gong on your left and the timer will begin. All you have to do is basically kill the first four bosses within the timer. And that is super easy as long as you don't go AFK for like 10 minutes. The order that I kill them in is the bottom left, bottom right, top right, then top left. But the order doesn't really matter to be honest, so just do whatever feels natural to you. When you are at Halasi and you've killed all four bosses, you want to free the prisoner in these cages right here. The prisoner will start wrecking the house and destroy all vases in the room. And in the third and final vase, you'll find a treasure bag called Kasha's bag, containing the Amani battle bearer, assuming that you've done it within the timer, of course. For the next spot on the list, we have the three primal raptors, the black, the red and the green primal raptor. To get these, you want to head to Pandaria. You can get there via a portal in your capital city of the faction you're playing. Then you want to fly north to the island called Isle of Giants. When you get here, you want to kill any dinosaur mob for a chance at the primal egg drop. The bigger the dinosaur, the higher the drop chance for the egg, up to an 8% drop chance, so you can get one really, really fast. In these primal eggs, you have a 100% drop chance to obtain one of the three mounts, the red, the green, and the black primal raptor. You can, however, only carry one egg at a time, and you can actually get a duplicate of mounts that you already have. So this is not a guaranteed new mount. If you get an egg, if you already have like one or two of the raptors, you could get one of the ones you have already. Then we have Garn Night Howl. This mount is also a 100% drop chance from a rare spawn called Knock Karash in the Frostfire Ridge zone in Drenna at this location. He does have a 15 minute spawn timer, which means at most you'll be waiting 15 minutes if someone else just killed him before you. However, the mount is also binds and equipped, which means it can be sold at the auction house. And because it is so easy to get, you can literally kill it every 15 minutes. The mount is very cheap. So if you're lazy, simply purchase it off the auction house for about 1000 gold. While we are at the very cheap auction house mounts, I'll also throw in the Cold Fist Gronling as well. This mount comes from garrison missions. However, the time it takes to unlock those missions is not worth it compared to just buying the mount off of the auction house as people are getting these left and right ever since they unlocked them. So all it takes is about a thousand gold and a auction house to get this mount. Now we're heading to Shadowlands for the Wild Seed Cradle. It's a pretty unique mount and it takes about five minutes to obtain and is guaranteed. All you have to do is a small puzzle in Ardenweald. You have to help out a NPC in Ardenweald called Twinklestar 
need to find her gardening tools, which she somehow misplaced. All the tools are located around the Garden of Night. There are five items you have to find. The Diary of the Night, the Gardener's Hammer, the Gardener's Basket, the Gardener's Flute, and the Gardener's Wand. They are located at these five locations. They are small items on the ground, so they can be a little tricky to notice. I'll also leave the coordinations in the description for you to easily copy and paste them into the game. Once you've collected all five tools, click on any of them to create Twinkle Star's Gardening Toolkit. And once you have this in your bags, you want to head back to Twinkle Star, who is located here, by the way. She'll now have a dialogue option that will grant you a buff called Moonsight. And once you have this, you'll see a cache of the moon right behind her. Inside will be the Wild Seed Cradle. Another mount available in Ardenweald in the Shadowlands is the Shimmer Mist Runner. This mount drops 100% from a rare spawn called Shisker, located right here. However, Shisker needs to be unlocked by running through the maze in the Mistvale Tangle in the correct pathing. This here is the exact route on the map. You can also find your way through by looking at which available door has a lamp with blue light somewhere around it. Also, you can just follow my pathing in this video running in the background. Anyway, make your way through the maze, kill Shisker and loot your Shimmer Mist Runner. We're staying in Shadowlands for a bit to get the next mount, the Slime Serpent. This mount is extremely easy and super fast to obtain. Head to Maldraxxus in the Shadowlands and go to the Dungeon Plaguefall. Make sure the difficulty is set to Heroic or Mythic. And make sure you're not in a group with anyone. You then have to solo clear the dungeon and all bosses. And if you're max level, this should be very easy. There is no time limit or other requirements. Simply go through the dungeon. And when you've killed the last boss, head back up via this portal right around the corner here. And you'll find a curious slime serpent in the edge of the toxic waste. Click it to receive your mount. From here, we'll finally head to the Dragon Isles, where the first mount we'll be getting is Magma Shell. To get this mount, you'll need an empty magma shell. This drops off of magma snails in the area around the Obsidian Citadel. The drop chance is about 2%. However, if you're super lazy, and the reason I kind of included this mount on the list, just head to the auction house and buy one of these empty shells. They are extremely cheap, sitting at around 500 to 1000 gold. And once you have the empty shell, head to this location. Here you'll find a lava pool, and in the middle of it is an empowered snail. If it's not spawned on your layer, I recommend using the Dungeon Finder tool to jump layer by joining a, a group in the Waking Shores. Just click quests and sign up for all the groups in the Waking Shores and they will probably invite you at some point. Once you see the snail, it's time to get your mount, of course. And all you have to do is get into the lava pool and interact with the snail. This will start a 20 second cast and once this cast is finished, you'll get the mount straight into your mount journal. The hard part is to survive 20 seconds in the lava, so there is a couple of ways. First, there is this toy called Everlasting Horn of Lava Swimming that you can obtain from the strong box you receive from the Siege of Dragonbane Keep event. The chance is rather low though. Another possibility is to get a healer friend to help you out. And lastly, you can mess around with your talents and spec into the most survival kind of stuff you can, and you'll probably be able to live it out. I believe that pretty much any spec and class can actually live these 20 seconds alone, as far as what I've seen in comments and stuff. Anyway, we are heading on to the last mount, which is the Temperamental Skyclaw. All you have to do for this mount is to deliver 20 pieces of three different kinds of food to a Skyclaw in the Three Falls Lookout in the Azure Span right here. You'll need 20 flash frozen meat, 20 Tosca jerky, and 20 Nolan's House Special. They can be bought off of the auction house for 6,000 gold in total on the EU region at least. You can also farm them out by yourself at these locations. And once you have all these, all the 60 foods, you want to deliver them and you straight up obtain your mount. And that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something new and obtained a few more mounts. Subscribe for more WoW related content. I primarily make mount guides, but sometimes some different stuff as well. Anyway, hit the like if you liked the video and leave a comment for Mr. Algorithm if you want to support me. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Bye.